over the past four years, I've been eating primarily only once a day, and it's been quite awesome. In this video, I'm going to tell you my four-year OMAD results, why I did it, how I did it, and what have I experienced. This is madness! Now, I do have to say that it's not precisely just one meal a day, and there are some days where I have two meals or three meals, depending on the situation. But on most days, I usually consume my calories within a window of two to three hours, and I fast about 21 to 22 hours every day. It's about 90% of the time I'm eating one meal a day, and if I'm just at home doing my own thing, then I would just naturally gravitate towards wanting to eat once a day. Uh, but if I'm traveling or if I'm participating in some events or having some dinners or having some lunches with some people then I would usually have maybe another meal at that time but yeah 90% of the time it's still OMAD Madness. first of all I want to talk about why would I do this <laughs> what are the reasons for it and what are the benefits well for me the biggest thing is just convenience and it's very simple I don't really want to spend time cooking or eating throughout the day I would much rather just you know be productive fast get some benefits from the fastest state and then just eat. Now there are of course some unique benefits to intermittent fasting like increased basal autophagy which recycles old dysfunctional cell parts and particles into energy. You'll also see more frequent pulses of growth hormone that promote fat loss and muscle maintenance. Intermittent fasting also promotes neurogenesis and growth of new brain cells by increasing BDNF. Several 2019 studies have shown that eating your food within 9 hours or less improves insulin sensitivity, lowers triglycerides, upregulates epigenetic longevity pathways, as well as autophagy. So even if I didn't do OMAD, I would still do some form of intermittent fasting, whether that be fasting for 16 hours, fasting for 12, 20 hours, or something like that. But I would much rather not eat the standard 3 meals a day, and I would always gravitate towards some form of time restricted eating. So here are some of the results that I've seen on my 4 year OMAD journey. I've stayed around the same total body weight, but my lean body mass has increased slightly. My starting weight before OMAD was about 74 kilograms, and at its highest, it's been at 80 kilograms. Nowadays, it stays around 76 to 78 kilograms, or 168 pounds. My physical strength has been gradually progressing, but it's a slow process. My goal isn't to be a powerlifter or a massive strength athlete. It's not my main goal. My main goal is just health and longevity. My blood work has been excellent with no deficiencies. Many biomarkers related to disease like fasting, blood sugar, insulin, triglycerides, IGF-1, inflammation, etc. are very low. Even my thyroid stimulating hormone is pretty much in the middle, which contradicts the idea that intermittent fasting or OMAD slow down your metabolism and wrecks your thyroid. My mental health and happiness have been excellent. I don't feel being deprived or missing out on eating three meals a day. It's very easy to diet down and stay lean without really starving yourself or doing a bunch of crazy cardio. During the day, my mind is clear, I don't have any distractions, and I get a lot of things done. The biggest difference that I've noticed after switching over from 16 and 8 type of fasting to 1 meal a day is that I don't really get hungry anymore, that there are no real signs of like massive hunger that you experience in a fast state. You may experience maybe infrequent arises or urges to eat or some cravings but those things pass away very fast and i don't really get you know massively hungry even if i'm fasting for like three to five days that's because of fat adaptation and keto adaptation my body is becoming very efficient at burning fatty acids for fuel and whenever i'm not eating then i'll just tap into my body fat stores that's the power of ketosis and keto adaptation you become very like indifferent towards calories, you don't really miss out on the ups and downs of blood sugar, you don't get any energy crashes, and it's very stable, you experience a stable energy throughout the entire day. You underestimate the power of the dark side. But isn't skipping meals bad for you? Aren't we supposed to have small frequent meals throughout the day to keep our metabolism going and to not binge? From my personal experience, I can say that that's definitely not the case. But there are some situations or some people where it may happen. One study found that the negative side effects of skipping breakfast, such as higher insulin and higher free fatty acids, happened in only people who were used to eating breakfast. If you're already doing intermittent fasting and skipping breakfast, then you're not going to go into starvation mode or develop binge eating disorder because you're used to fasting. This also explains why some people say you shouldn't skip meals because you're going to start gorging and overeating afterwards. Well, of course, if you're not used to fasting, you're going to be more hungry after breaking the fast. But that's not inherently caused by fasting. 
it's caused by you not getting used to it. So, like I said in the beginning, I haven't been eating just one meal a day for these last four years. I have made some adjustments, but I'm still getting the benefits of this extended fasting, as well as the benefits of eating one meal a day. So, here are some of the modifications that I've made to my OMA diet. First, I'm not rushing my meal or timing it. Sometimes, if I don't have a bunch of calories to eat, I finish my meal in 30 minutes, and at others, when I've trained or worked out and I have too many calories to eat, then I'll actually have two smaller meals over the course of three hours. Secondly, on some days, I might have a cup of bone broth or bulletproof coffee before my meal. This technically does break a fast, but it doesn't really affect autophagy that much because I'm timing them carefully. Third, if I'm doing resistance training in a fasted state, I do something that I call targeted intermittent fasting. Basically, to mitigate the increased muscle catabolism that would occur from working out fasted, I consume a small protein shake during the workout. This gives me some amino acids that will protect against muscle loss and actually will help me to build muscle despite working out fasted and eating one meal a day. In total, it's just like 100 calories and 25 grams of protein, which is enough to raise blood amino acid levels and muscle protein synthesis without really affecting autophagy or growth hormone. Because I'm also taking it during my workout, I'm essentially burning those calories for energy immediately anyway, and I'm getting both the benefits of fasted training as well as muscle hypertrophy. You, son of a you can learn more about this protocol and how to do it precisely in my book Metabolic Autophagy. These modifications, they're meant to make OMAD more sustainable and easy to stick to. You shouldn't be so strict about anything you do when it comes to nutrition because there are many things that change all the time and your approach and preference may also change. If something isn't broken, then don't try to fix it. But if you're not getting the results that you want, then do change something. Here are the pros of OMAD. It's very easy to lose fat because you have such a small time frame to eat. If you fast for 23 to 24 hours, you'll probably start getting into actual autophagy that has a much greater effect on your health than just increased basal autophagy. After proper fat adaptation, you become immune to hunger and cravings. It frees up a lot of mental faculties and willpower by not having to think about eating. You give your digestion really good rest and keep your digestive organs working properly for longer. Your body becomes more efficient at absorbing and retaining the nutrients from food. You can eat more carbs while staying somewhat keto adapted. Here are the cons of OMAD. It's quite difficult to build strength and muscle, which is why using something like the targeted IF is amazing for overcoming that limitation. You may find it difficult to eat all of the calories in such a small time frame, if you're not trying to lose weight. You'll have sub-optimal rates of protein synthesis by being able to spike it within such a small time frame. That's why if you're trying to build muscle with OMAD, then targeted IF is definitely the way to go. If you eat too much food in volume, you may get bloated and feel awful, but at the same time you can eat higher calorie dense meals that'll satiate you more while still maintaining a calorie maintenance. If you eat too close to bedtime, you'll disrupt your sleep quality. Fasting that long all the time may cause metabolic adaptation and cause too much stress, which can be avoided by changing things up every once in a while. If you're new to intermittent fasting and want to try it out, then definitely subscribe and check out all of my other videos about this topic. If you want to try it out, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy, and the book also is going to give you advanced tactics for muscle growth, as well as just optimizing longevity with intermittent fasting. So, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. This is Sparta!